Hello viewers, in this video we are going to discuss validation based protocols which are also known as optimistic concurrency control protocol. These validation based protocols are one of the concurrency control protocols. This lecture is focused on discussing these points. One is what is validation based protocol and why it is called as an optimistic concurrency control scheme and what are the three phases of a transaction and its timestamp and what is the timestamp of a transaction and what are the rules to be satisfied to get through the validation test successfully and finally how to determine the serializability order of transactions with a given example schedule. Let us now discuss what is validation based protocol. A validation based protocol is an appropriate concurrency control method in cases where a majority of transactions are read only transactions you know when a transactions the majority of the transactions are read only transactions the rate of conflict conflict among these transactions is low so in such cases this validation based protocol is the most appropriate one okay so whereas uh, when we discuss about a log based and a timestamp ordering protocol these protocols applies the rules for performing both the operations that is for performing read as well as write operations these protocols applies the rules so only when those rules are uh, satisfied then only permits the transactions to do the corresponding operation that's why these protocols imposes more overhead of uh, code execution and it further delay the transaction execution also whereas coming to a uh, validation based protocol or validation scheme validation test is not at all performed for read only transactions okay that is applicable only for the transaction that performs the write operation that's why this protocol uh, imposes less overhead okay so let us now discuss three phases of transactions and its timestamps according to validation based protocol every transaction goes through three phases okay and the last phase is not applicable to read only transaction that we will discuss uh, shortly okay so the three phases of transaction uh, are read and execution phase validation phase and write phase okay uh, due uh, coming to read and execution phase the system executes the transaction and it reads the values of the data items and stores them in a local variables of the transactions now during this phase there won't be any update is made into the actual database okay so uh, so when all read and execution are performed on the data items and uh, it enter into the validation phase during this phase the validation test is performed in transaction to determine if local variables can be updated to the database without violating the serializability or not if the transaction succeeds in the validation test then it is permitted to enter into write phase okay Here it is permitted to do the updates into the actual database if suppose the transaction fails in validation test then validation phase itself it is rolled back and is not at all permitted to enter into write phase okay and this write phase is also not applicable to the read only transactions so read only transactions omit this phase okay uh, let us now discuss the time stamp of uh, these uh, phases of transactions okay uh, start time stamp is assigned for read and execution phase validation time stamp is assigned for validation phase and if finish time stamp is maintained in uh, write phase okay Coming to start time stamp, it indicates the time when the transaction started its execution. Okay. A validation time stamp indi it indicates the time when the transaction entered its validation phase. Whereas finish time stamp it indicates the time when the transaction finished its write phase. Okay. The one more important point uh, is that that is the time stamp of the transaction. Okay. Here, timestamp of the transaction is assigned with validation timestamp. The meaning of this is that whenever the transaction enters into the validation phase, immediately the transaction uh, is assigned with the timestamp. So, timestamp of the transaction 
it indicates the time when the transaction entered into validation phase okay this is what the meaning okay um, very similar to the timestamp based protocols in validation based protocol also pre-realizability order of transactions are uh, ensured um, according to its timestamp only okay so let us now discuss uh, either the given non serial schedule is serializable or not by applying the validation based protocol okay this is a non serial schedule because before the completion of the transaction t1 operations uh, uh, transaction t2 it started its execution that's why it is a non serial schedule okay let us apply the validation based protocol on this so according to validation based protocol the transactions are permitted to do all read and um, ALU operations so accordingly first operation of uh, t1 is read operation here you can notice that whenever the transaction starts its read and execution phase it will be assigned with the start, start timestamp accordingly what is the start timestamp of transaction t1 it is 9 the meaning of this is that the uh, at 9 o'clock it started its read and execution phase and um, next operation is read on uh, b by t2 so here also whenever it enters into the read and execution phase the start timestamp is assigned for the transaction t2 that as uh, you assume that one as 9.01 okay so now uh, during this read and execution phase uh, the transactions are permitted to do all uh, read uh, read operations and alu operations okay so read operation and alu operation uh, these two will be uh, performed and this will be kept pending and uh, the other operation read on a also will be uh, performed then coming to t2 the next operation is read on a then so meanwhile the transaction t1 it completes its operation okay here then all the read operations are executed the transaction enters into the next phase is validation phase right so before performing its final operation it has to enter into the validation phase so here validation timestamp is maintained now uh, so it indicates the time when it entered into the validation phase okay so after the validation since validation this validation test will be successful only because there is uh, no other transaction that started before the execution of uh, before the read and uh, execution phase of t1 that's why obviously it will be successful only that's why it is uh, it, uh, it, and uh, that's why it is proceeded uh, to do the next operation so next operation is uh, here even even in t2 also all the operations are uh, over the only thing is write operations right so uh, what is the condition to be satisfied to perform these write operations it has to uh, successfully uh, meet the validation test okay so accordingly let us now uh, permit transaction uh, t2 uh, into validation phase so the timestamp is also maintained okay so here validation test needs to be performed right let us check uh, either it meets the validation condition or not here out of these two uh, conditions thus the second condition is applicable because the given schedule is the non serializable schedule the first condition is applicable for only a serial uh, schedule okay so let us take the second condition in that let us um, replace ti and tj uh, with t1 and t2 accordingly um, just to be slightly changed okay start of t2 must be less than the finish of t1 it must be less than the validation of t2 accordingly what is the start of t2 it is 9.01 what is the uh, finish of t1 since there is no right phase let us take the uh, last timestamp of this 9.05 then coming to uh, validation of t2 it is 9.07 okay if you check these values it uh, uh, satisfy the condition so it becomes a uh, true that's why it succeeds in the validation test so since it succeeds the test it is permitted to enter into the right phase so now it can make the final updates on um, on uh, the data items a and b into the database okay so when it completes the right phase successfully immediately the finish timestamp is also assigned to it okay um, so now we have uh, you know we can observe that all the operations in t1 and t2 are executed successfully that's why we can uh, uh, we can conclude that the given non serial schedule is a serializable one okay the one more important point to be discussed is that uh, serializability order of the transactions 
as we already discussed that uh, time stamp of ta is assigned with the validation time stamp of ta so accordingly let us assign the uh, time um, let us assign the validation time stamp of t1 and t2 as the time stamp of t1 and t2 so here time stamp of t1 is 9.05 uh, time stamp of uh, 0 to uh, is the 9.07 okay so what is the serializability order condition ts of t1 always must be ts of t2 okay so uh, if apply the values uh, 9.05 is less than 9.07 right so um, uh, serializability order is maintained according to this uh, time stamp values right so um, we can say that the serializability order uh, becomes uh, true Okay, this serializability order will be maintained only when the validation test condition is satisfied. Otherwise, this valid uh, this serializability order will not be maintained. Okay, students. So from this we can understand that always the validation timestamp of uh, the first transaction must always be less than the validation timestamp of transaction P2, and this will be true only when the condition the second condition is satisfied. Okay. And one more important point is that um, this validation based protocol is also called as optimistic concurrency control protocol. Is that right? So, because um, this protocol is not imposing uh, much restrictions on the read only transactions, as well, um, it permits all the transactions, irrespective of the operation it performs, it permits all the transactions to do um, uh, read as well as ALU operations. And once it finishes, then only it makes a validation test. Okay, that's why. Uh, uh, so it permits all the transactions with the hope that that will not violate the consistency of database. Okay, that's why this uh, validation based protocol is also known as optimistic concurrency control protocol. Uh, students, if you find this video useful to you, kindly subscribe to this channel. Thanks for watching.